the world's first fully public railway began operating in 1825, during the Industrial Revolution. It was designed by the father of steam locomotion, George Stevenson, to carry coal from the mines near Darlington in South Durham to Stockton on England's coast. It was a huge success, achieving a 30% saving over haulage by horse and cart. More than a century and a half later, another significant railway engineering project is being undertaken here in Australia. This railway line is also designed to carry coal. Malden is near Picton on the main Sydney-Melbourne line. From here, the railway will traverse the bushland of Sydney's water catchment area, emerge at the Illawarra escarpment, descend through rainforest and on to Port Kembla. This is the story of unique engineering skills, of challenges met in difficult terrain, and of sensitivity for the environment, all accomplished by the State Rail Authority of New South Wales. Currently, Coal-laden trains from the state's western mines take this congested route through Sydney and the city's southern suburbs. The new Malden Port Kembla line will be an export freeway. December 1983, the first sod was turned. Still ahead lie years of earthworks, track construction and tunnelling. Two major bridges are to be built. One across the Nepean River. The other across the magnificent Cordo Gorge. Both bridges will be higher than the pylons of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, and environmental restrictions dictate that no debris of any kind be allowed to fall into the gorges. Formidable tasks for the engineers to overcome. The Malden Port Kembla line will also include the longest single track railway tunnel in Australia the Avon, more than four kilometres in length. Traditionally, railway tunnels are built from each end, meeting in the centre. But with the Avon, more than 90% will be excavated from the east portal, for a very good reason. If one half of the tunnel is constructed from the west portal, underground spoil would have to be deposited in Sydney's catchment area, thus endangering the city's water supply. Eventually, the new railway will carry 24 3,000 ton trains a day, each way over steep gradients. Uh, in order to build a, uh, a railway that will take a very heavily laden coal train safely down the 1 in 30 grades, we've chosen a track structure, which I'm standing on, of concrete sleepers and 60 kilogram per metre rail. This is the Rolls-Royce track within the SRA system. It's the best one we build. The section along the escarpment is being duplicated to serve two purposes. Wheat trains from Goulburn will also use the new line on their way to the grain terminal now being built at Port Kembla. The unstable terrain here makes earthworks particularly difficult. One severe storm created an unexpected problem for the engineers. During that time we had to dig a foundation for a gabion wall at the toe of it and the existing embankment actually started to slide with the existing railway on it down the hill. We had to quickly fill in our excavation and speed up the construction of the retaining wall at the toe. The surface of the embankment was also stabilised by spraying the slope with fast growing vegetation.
gabion and stone retaining walls, wide culverts, and grassing ensure the embankments are secured and the existing environment is maintained. That's the secret. You've got, you've got to work with nature and uh, you've got to try and get the water back into its natural course as, as gently as possible and as quickly as possible on the bottom side of your works. Strict environmental control was of paramount importance, especially through the sensitive water catchment area, virtually untouched since colonisation. This area is regarded as being a wildlife and botanical library. Environmental impact studies, close liaison with the water board, minimal clearing of trees and shrubs and pollution controls ensured the least disturbance. For example, this section is the habitat of the greater glider, a restricted species of possum. Here, clearing distance was reduced to enable the animals to fly across the tracks and over passing trains. And underpasses have been built to allow wildlife to pass safely from one side of the line to the other. The final major engineering feature of the line is the bridge across the Princess Highway at Unandera. A level crossing has been eliminated and the roadway widened, resulting in a greatly improved traffic flow. On completion, a new line will connect the state's rapidly developing inland with one of Australia's major industrial regions and provide a more efficient route for trains bringing the primary products of New South Wales to the eastern seaboard. And as international demand for our coal returns, sufficient transport to meet the needs of increased trade will be guaranteed. The Malden-Port Kembla Line, the export freeway.